Hello friends, welcome back to the channel. It's DG Rachel and I am so excited to be releasing my latest video on my updated ceremony and cocktail hour system for 2023 using the Everse 8. Now my last video on my ceremony and cocktail hour system for weddings, I was utilizing the Electra Voice 30M and it has been nothing short of amazing. But obviously several years have passed, new technologies released and Electra Voice has finally dropped their first battery powered speaker. And of course I had to have it. Now, just to be clear, this video is not a review on the Everse 8 since I already did that. I actually have like a 20 minute video on every feature with the speaker. So go check that out. I'll post the link to that video in the video description. Today, I just wanna focus on how I'm utilizing the Everse 8 as my brand new ceremony and cocktail hour system or satellite speaker system for wedding season. As more and more of my weddings are being held in less conventional locations, having a battery powered option has been tremendous. Not only is the speaker battery powered, but the Everse 8 has the ability to power a microphone base. So that means you can put this anywhere and you are not tied to an outlet or at the mercy of the venue's power source. And now be out of the way of photographers and videographers and also set up in a spot that's going to optimize the best sound for your guests. Not to mention no wires on the ground, which means no gaff, no mats, and no trip hazard. My current setup with the Everse is all about great essentials. No frills, no fuss, sets up in a matter of minutes and it gives premium sound in a really small footprint. So with that, let's dive into my 2023 ceremony setup with the Everse 8. I transport all of this. This is the Everse 8 tote, really spacious bag. On the outside, we have a rubberized coating to provide additional protection to whatever you have on the inside. We have two ways to carry this with a padded Velcro handle or an adjustable padded shoulder strap. On the side here, we have a pocket for accessories. Now I noticed when I got the bag that it had these Velcro strips on the side and I knew that there obviously had to be some type of divider. <laughs> this rigid bottom actually is not a rigid bottom at all. Now you obviously don't have to use this, but I would recommend it because this acts as a buffer between the Everse 8 speaker and then the accessory shelf. So this way you can keep them both in the bag and nothing is going to rub against each other, get scratched or damaged during transport. The Everse 8 would go over here and the accessory tray and other things would go on this side. There's an additional pocket here for whatever you may need. And again, it just keeps things nice and divided so nothing is getting scratched while you're moving stuff around. Keeps things nice and organized and protected. <laughs>
Now that we just saw the time lapse of getting everything set up and synced, I wanted to go through the individual components that make this a complete system. So to start, the first thing I'm going to need to do is attach the Everse 8 accessory tray to the speaker. I need to tighten these four screws, and what's awesome about these is that they don't actually come off the shelf, meaning once you loosen it, they're not gonna fall off and you don't have to worry about losing them, another thing to keep track of. So they stay right with the shelf and they simply just tighten and loosen as needed. Once this has been secured to the speaker, now this acts as a handle where we can pick it up or use this to kind of carry it around wherever you need to put it. The next thing I'm gonna to need to do is attach my mic base to the shelf. They have a strap here that holds everything secure to the shelf. The Everse is designed to work with the RE3, which is this, or the R300, but it is compatible with other makes and models. I'm simply just gonna put this on the top of the shelf, obviously with the connections facing the back so we can get everything connected to the speaker. I'm just gonna pull on this strap, cinch it down, and now my mic base is secured to the shelf. And just to prove to you that I have zero worries about this not staying on top, totally fine. The next thing I need to do is attach my antennas. Now what's awesome about this whole entire design is when I get this on a speaker pole, it's gonna get everything nice and high in the air. Then I have to connect power. So a little bit about this. This Everse 8 accessory tray comes with the power wire to connect the mic base to the speaker. The Everse 8, one of its best features, has the ability to power compatible mic bases. As I said, this is designed to work with the RE3 or the R300, but it can work with other brands of microphone. What you need to do is check the back of the speaker check the back of your unit and make sure it's compatible. And if you need a wire and this wire is not compatible with your specific mic base, you can contact NLFX and they will make you a custom cable so that you can plug your mic base into the DC out of the speaker. And now my mic base is being powered by the Everse, which means I can literally put this anywhere. Uh, since this is a battery powered speaker and I don't have to run power to power my mic base, this gives me so much more flexibility. Amazing feature. The next thing I have to do is start working on my audio connections. I had NLFX make me a custom 19 inch cable to make this as neat as possible. So I'm gonna simply connect it to the mic base and then come down to input one and now the mic base is connected to the speaker. The next thing I'm gonna wanna do is connect my Sennheiser pack to the Everse. Now a little bit about this and kind of why I chose to do this. If I connect, let's just say, my iPad or iPhone via Bluetooth to this speaker, speaker A, it will play out of speaker B through the stereo Bluetooth connection. But again, this is only for Bluetooth. So now if I have an efficient and they're using my RE3 microphone and I wanna be able to hear the efficient out of speaker B, I am gonna have to use some type of um, transmitter to get the signal from speaker A over to speaker B. I have this marked as the transmitter so I know which pack goes to what speaker. And I also have double-sided Velcro, so all I have to do is just come and attach this right like so. I now have the antenna uh, vertical. Again, it's gonna be nice and high for direct line of sight. And then now I'm gonna take this uh, XLR to 3.5 millimeter. I'm gonna use the mix out to send the entire signal to this Sennheiser pack and then come up and connect it right like so. 
The Everse also has the ability to charge a tablet or phone. Now, I always have my stuff charged before an event, but in the event I forgot something happened or it was just an extremely long event that I was doing, I can provide uh, additional power to either my tablet or cell phone. Now coming on over to the other Everse, it's kind of self-explanatory here, but here is my other Sennheiser pack. So this is the receiver. I have this marked as so, again, with more double-sided Velcro, I can stick this right to the side of the speaker. And then this just simply connects to input one. So now what's ever playing over here will play over here. Here's a little crash course on these Sennheiser packs. I'm gonna show you how to get these synced up and also some tips on how to maximize their performance. There are a lot of options out there for wireless technology. However, I trust Sennheiser implicitly. I always use these for my weddings and these have uh, been tremendous for me when you can't compromise sound, especially for someone's wedding ceremony. Now on the outside, they look pretty similar, but there is a very distinct difference between the two of these. The one in my right hand is my transmitter and the one in my left hand is my receiver. How do I know that? Well, if we come to the top of these packs, you'll see the mic line in as well as my mute button. So this is going to be sending the signal to my receiver pack. And I know this is my receiver because it says AF out. This is always on the receiver and you're gonna connect this to where you're sending your audio signal to. Now these packs also do come labeled that will say transmitter and receiver. Unfortunately, I had to cover mine up with this double-sided Velcro so that I could stick these to the side of my Everse. But not only is it gonna label it uh, transmitter and receiver, but it's also gonna give you your frequency band. Now you can pair these manually, but I highly recommend using the sync feature. Not only is it easier, but it's also going to scan and automatically find the best frequency range for your area. So to get started, I'm first going to power both of these packs on and I just wanna reset the frequencies and just have it rescan and pick what's gonna be best for this particular area. So to reset these, I'm going to come to my receiver pack, hit set, come to easy setup, go on down to reset list and let that reset. And now I'm gonna come over to my transmitter and do the same even though the menu does look a little different. So here I'm gonna to have to come to advanced, go to reset, and then hit yes. All right, so now we're working with a clean slate here. I'm now gonna turn off our transmitter pack and just kind of put this to the side. We will come back to this in a second. And now I'm gonna be working with our receiver pack. So now what I wanna do is start to scan, scan new list, and have this search for the best cleanest frequency for my area. This does take a little bit of time, but it's really important to do. And frankly, everyone should be doing this before every single event. You'll see that my frequency band here is 470 through 516. Just as I said, that would be you know labeled on the back here, but it's gonna do a complete scan and figure out which has the least um, amount of congestion. So this is what it's recommending. It says bank five and it has 12 free channels. I operate under the premise where I think more is better. So, you know, I will scan through these sometimes just to make sure that I'm using the one with the most uh, free channel. So you can see here bank 16 has six free. We'll go with what it recommended. Uh, if you're not getting the results you want, you absolutely can kind of dial this in through trial and error when you get to your actual venue. So we're gonna go with bank five, free 12 channels, and lock that in. Now I have to pair the receiver to the transmitter. So I'm gonna come over to the transmitter, get this turned on, I'm going to come back to my receiver, hit set, and now I'm going to scroll until I find sync. It is now in sync mode and I wanna take this IR and that IR and kind of just put them together. And then I'll get a little check mark to show that they synced up and now ready to go. There are two additional parameters I wanted to quickly discuss just so you can get the cleanest signal possible. The first is going to be pilot tone. So pilot tone is a setting on both the transmitter and receiver pack. 
And essentially what pilot tone is, is it's sending out a specific signal from the transmitter and the receiver pack is constantly looking for that specific signal. If this receiver does not see that specific signal from the transmitter, it's automatically going to mute itself. And the purpose of this is so that you don't get that it's in an extra layer of protection because that is the last thing that we want. So you wanna make sure that this is active in both the transmitter, which I have here. You can see it's active right there. And then as well in the receiver pack, you can toggle it on and off. But again, my recommendation is to always have this on. The last parameter I want to discuss is squelch, and you're going to be able to dial that in on the receiver pack. So if we come back to the menu, you'll see squelch right here, and I have mine set to low. I'll explain in a second, but we can elevate this to middle or high. So the reason why I have mine set to low is because I want to maximize the distance that these two packs can be from each other. The higher the squelch filter, the shorter the distance. These packs are rated to work up to 300 feet from each other. And from experience with my other Sennheiser unit, that is absolutely no problem. Just for an example, you'll see that I have the squelch turned to high and you see these little dots over here for the RF signal. You'll notice that the threshold has changed. That's what these little white dots are indicating. So if I come back to low and change this, now you'll notice the two white dots are way down here with low. So again, it's changing the threshold. The only time I would elevate the squelch is if I was working around a lot of other electronic devices or things that could potentially be on the same frequency range. This is something you would dial in again at your event each and every time, but 99.9% .9 of the time my squelch is on the lowest setting. Once again, to make sure I'm getting the maximum distance between these two body packs. So you know me, I always like to test things out. So I actually set up my ceremony rig on the back deck with the E-verse 8, just as I would for any wedding ceremony. So up here at the top, you're gonna see that I have my RE3 base and I'm wearing the RE3 body pack here and I have my Electro Voice headset here. On the side, here's my Sennheiser pack, which is connected to the other E-verse, which I actually have sitting in the front yard. So I have my iPad here connected via Bluetooth, again, connected to the other Everse in the front yard. So first, let me get some royalty free music going on here. And now let me unmute my body pack. All right, there we go. So just coming around to the front. So you obviously can hear everything is working. You're fine. I have the volumes kind of low. It's a Sunday. I don't want to drive everybody nuts today. So everything's working. Sounds great. Coming down the deck stairs. and I'm gonna swing around to the front yard. I can still hear myself. Definitely way over 300 feet. Don't necessarily recommend this, but you know me, I always kind of push things to the limit. So the speaker is up on the deck and I'm coming around to the front yard. All right, so I hear music. I'll be like, what is she doing? <laughs> so can you hear me good? Right? So here's our, uh, our testimonial. <laughs> so uh, you guys could hear me good, right? Yeah. How'd it sound, Mom? I'm making a video. Don't make a video. I always make videos. So you can hear me good up here? <laughs> yeah. All right, so there you go. There's your testimonial. <laughs> so here's my Evers sitting in the front yard. I can still hear the mic which is again on the back deck. Another tip I have if you need to extend the range is going to be to not rely on the stereo Bluetooth. Bluetooth is pretty limited. So if you wanna make sure that everything is absolutely flawless, I recommend running everything through the Sennheiser pack. This is why I'm choosing to use the mix out into the Sennheiser pack. So now whatever is being played on speaker A is going to transmit to speaker B. So what I would do is turn off the Bluetooth on the iPad, not connect it to the Everse, and literally use a direct connection 
from whatever music source you're using and use it into an input in the Everse. This way, everything is going through the Sennheiser pack and you're not playing your music through the Bluetooth. To show you how much more range I have, let me restart this royalty-free song here. I'll turn up the volume just a little bit. Okay, so once again, everything is going through this Sennheiser pack. I am not utilizing Bluetooth. And again, I'm definitely going way past the recommended distance, but just check this out. So the speaker is up on the deck. I can still hear the music. Again, not playing it loud. Don't want to drive the neighborhood nuts today. And I have the other speaker in, in the woods. I don't know if you can hear the music yet. Probably not, but I can. So again, this is the advantage of not using the stereo Bluetooth because Bluetooth range is pretty limited. And then when you add bodies and stuff, it can impact the distance even more. But with these Sennheiser packs, man, I'm telling you, you can go insanely far. So I'm literally <laughs> in the woods right now. And it's perfect. So give you some reference here. I'm in the woods. That's my deck and the speaker is like in the center of the house on the deck outside. So this is probably how I would choose to do it. I don't think I would utilize the Bluetooth much unless we were really, really close. But these Sennheiser packs are incredible. It's a perfect pairing with the Everse 8. All right, let me get <laughs> out of the woods. I don't know, ticks are supposed to be bad this year, so. Hopefully, I didn't just get a tick from that. Beautiful spring day, by the way. Now, I don't know about you, but one of the most stressful parts of weddings for me is the ceremony because of microphone dropouts and feedback. We only have one chance to get this right. And if something goes wrong with the audio, everyone is turning around and looking at you. One of the other great features of the Everse 8 is that it has automatic feedback suppression technology built right in to make managing feedback fast and easy. I'm actually surprised how well this actually works. And this is invaluable for wedding ceremonies, particularly if you're using lavalier microphones, which are very prone to feedback. Uh, Clip-on microphones typically are worn farther away from the sound source, which exposes the user to feedback. So if you turn the loudspeaker up loud enough or amplify the mic signal too much, you're bound to create a feedback loop. A feedback loop is created when sound is captured by a microphone, amplified, played through the loudspeaker, picked up again by the microphone, then reamplified in a continuous loop, which generates a howling or screeching sound, you know, where everyone just wants to put their hands over their ears or they're turning around and looking right at the DJ. There's always risk of feedback when there is a microphone and a loudspeaker in the same space, but there are ways to minimize the risk of this happening. What's great about the Everse 8 is that it has automatic feedback suppression built in, which automatically targets problematic frequencies and responds by lowering the gain volume of these specific frequencies in real time. So let's check out how this works. The first thing I'm gonna wanna do is come down to function and change this from basic to mixer. This is going to allow us to access the anti-feedback suppression. Next, I'm gonna come down and look for AFS, which is right here. You can see it's off, so to toggle this on, simply hit the menu and turn it on. So now our anti-feedback suppression is now activated, and you're gonna to wanna to do this on both speakers. And now you can see right here, on the DSP that AFS is now turned on. So here's with the anti-feedback suppression off. You can hear the feedback right there. 
So now let me come and turn the anti-feedback suppression on. And now you can hear how it completely just eliminated all of that. So once again, let me turn this off and then you can hear the difference and how it automatically comes back. And then I will turn it on again and then it has eliminated pretty much all the feedback. When I'm telling you this works amazing, it works amazing. That's gonna wrap this video on my Everse 8 Ceremony and Cocktail Hour system. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you'd like to purchase anything shown in this video, be sure to reach out to Ben Stowe and friends at NLFX for all of your audio needs. That's where I grabbed everything you saw here. I'll put the purchase links down in the video description. Thank you again for your time. And I hope every single one of you has the best event season yet. Happy mixing DJs and we'll see you next time.